one day Paul Gardner, who was Gary's bass player in the original Two Way Army, walked into our record shop in Ealing. Um, and in those days, we'd only released two or three singles, so we were very, very young as a record company, and essentially we were, we were record shops. And uh, when people brought in tapes, which they increasingly did, we just played them over the, over the stereo in the record shop. And uh, Paul Gardner walked in with, but I guess, the first few tracks that we eventually released. And uh, we played them, we loved them. And he was like three quarters of the way through the album, which was done really quickly. It was done in like a week. And I went down to uh, to listen to it. And Our Friends Electric was the only track that we hadn't heard before we went into the studio. All the other tracks, you know, we'd heard, we'd heard early versions of. But Our Friends Electric came on right at the very end uh, of, of of the recording. And I walked in the studio, and they they played it to me, and I immediately thought it was a spectacular track. And I said, "That's got to be a single." doesn't sound like a single, it doesn't shake like a single, but it's such an amazing track that I think you, you need to bear in mind that these, these, these were the days of punk, this was real guitar music, um, and Gary's first album or, or it's, didn't really fit in with punk because it was kind of more, more tuneful and more complex than a lot of what punk music was, but the first album was nonetheless you know, a very straightforward guitar album. Um, one of the reasons for that, they didn't do anything other than guitars and, and drums. And um, very soon after that first record came out, um, quite surprisingly soon, uh, Gary started bugging us to buy him a computer, uh, sorry, a computer, synthesizer, a MOOC, um, a poly MOOC, well actually a mini MOOC first and then a poly MOOC. Um, and it, it seems, seems weird, it seems weird now, but I think the first of them cost like 700 pounds and the second one 1,500 pounds and uh, that was a huge amount of money for us in those days so we actually we actually had to borrow the money to uh, to buy in those uh, machines and it took a lot of badgering from him to persuade us to do it. We, we didn't think it was the wrong thing, we just didn't didn't have the money at that point. Um, and it was really the purchase of those two synthesizers that uh, took me into another sphere. Firstly, we did a picture disc on the um, on the single, which was really unusual. In those I think it was the second one that had been done. The first one was by the Cars. Wow. So it was a really kind of smart looking picture disc. So it was a really unique and collectible mm -hmm. item. Um, and we had uh, we had a license deal with Warner's at that point. And Warner's, I think, had exclusive access to the present plant <coughs> that actually made them. So that that, that was what kind of translated his, his existing following into a top 50 chart position. Um, in those days, of course, records went slowly up the chart. They didn't actually go, go as high as they were going to go on day one and gradually fall down. The idea was to kind of gradually build them up the chart in those days. Um, and simultaneously, we got two TV shows for him in the same week, which was almost unprecedented. We got Top of the Pops, which was because of the chart entry, which was obviously the single show. And we got a show called The Old Grey Whistle Test, which was like the album show. And it was kind of almost unprecedented for an artist on those days, in those days, to be on both those shows. They were kind of generally either or. Um, you generally couldn't do both because, you know, one was the singles market and one was the albums market and there weren't that many people that sold both. Um, and the impact from his presentation, how he looked and what he performed on those two shows was just huge. It was absolutely huge. I mean, Gary had he decided he wanted to do it, he calculated exactly how he wanted to present himself, and the impact was just enormous. So the two TVs in one week was essentially what blew it up and drove the single up the charts, followed by the album. Yeah. Our Friends Electric was a, a very, very radical number one single. It was five and a half minutes long, didn't particularly have a tune you could harm. It was completely different to every, every other thing around. It was really adventurous, cutting edge music, and I think it's it's now recognised that he was a real pioneer in that in that in, in that area. Well, we knocked off number one eventually. It was Anita Ward, "Ring My Bell," and that was fairly characteristic of the records that were around at that time. It's a little disgusting. <laughs> how 
the cycle of appreciation has gone for Gary. He was obviously hugely popular, and then of course the, the flip side of the coin, hugely popular, is becoming very uncool. And then gradually over the last, I suppose, last 15 years probably, um, he's been recognised by other artists as having been hugely influential. Mm -hmm.